Merci beaucoup, Ian, et bienvenue à tous. Thank you, Ian, and welcome to all. Start by talking a little bit about the background, recognizing my seven minutes, and I've already set my stopwatch, so Ian doesn't need to worry. Um, the current situation, I think, uh, that we live in is that uh, we have had, we've lived through an economic downturn over the last five years. We've seen that investment in cultural heritage projects and initiatives um, has really become quite limited. And often the investments that are available are event focused. You know, let's celebrate the War of 1812. Uh, and they're not necessarily things that are going to be sustaining uh, long term investments that are required to be able to provide access to digital content. That said, the expectation for digital access from the public and more and more from researchers, educators, genealogists, historians is becoming assumed. Uh, we have situations at the university where a professor will request a student uh, to do exhaustive research in a very narrow area of interest, and the student will come back and say, here is everything. I have a list of everything that exists on this subject. There's no primary materials. There's nothing before 1992. And the professor says, well, are you sure this is exhaustive? Well, yes, I went to the internet, and I got everything that was there. So this, this is a bit of a problem for us, I think. And so I think it becomes more and more important at this point in time that we leverage uh, the strong archival system that we have, the move towards working collaboratively in terms of having infrastructure, having uh, the standards and uh, the, the um, metadata uh, uh, in place to be able to support access to electronic collections, but at the same time we need to develop viable financial models and business cases that will allow us to be able to make the contents of our collections be accessible to all. And in economic uh, times of challenge, uh, this will be difficult. So I'm going to be suggesting perhaps some radical approaches and ones that may go against our natural culture and history, but I think you need to consider all options and then you need to identify which ones will serve your situation and your need and leverage those. We do know that digitization costs um, that require human resources, the metadata, the description, the transcription, are extremely expensive and those costs are increasing. At the same time, technology costs uh, for preservation, access, storage are decreasing uh, and there are commercial and not-for-profit organizations like Ancestry and Canadiana.org that are willing to provide free or low-cost digitization services that relate to new business models. Um, now, one is exploiting the value of the online documentary heritage and providing that access, and one must decide which kind of partners would best suit the, the organization involved. I think that we have to realize that once you digitize something, you have to sustain it. People need to have perpetual access to it, and that is where there can be quite substantial costs because you need the infrastructure, you need uh, redundancy, you need to be continually refreshing the information and updating the infrastructure and software, and that's where collaboration and having shared infrastructure can really um, make, uh, be leveraged by the participating institutions. Um, we've talked earlier, we've heard speakers talk about the importance of um, Sorry, my stopwatch switched to the world clock and I was about to go into another time zone. Um, uh, we've, we, we've talked about the importance of people understanding the role of archives and archivists and that the value that they bring uh, to society. Um, I think the key is that um, people need to know that uh, cultural uh, heritage is a treasure that must be preserved and made accessible. Um, but the way you're going to get people to realize that, both the current and future generations, is to demonstrate the cultural value, the economic value, the academic value, the educational value, legal, entertainment, all the values. And um, I think that in, in the world of today, the economic value is especially important. So I think uh, that we can look at a number of possible uh, economic models um, which, as I say, some may conflict with our philosophical approaches, but we've already looked at budget, budgeting strategies. 
where you reallocate funds either from your operating budget or perhaps if you have monies that are dedicated to building your collections from your collections uh, into digitization initiatives. We've also all been successful in getting grants and having sponsors at different points in time. Uh, we have debated whether we should have subscription models and that could relate to, to user fees. At the same time, today we're looking a lot at value-added strategies. Can one provide access to the vanilla version and then perhaps charge for a more enhanced version that would allow you to build up funds to be able to invest in creating more content or providing access to more content? We can also look at whether content can be repurposed and reused. In, in different ways, and there may be opportunities for revenue generation through that. Um, we can deal with that uh, delicate question of advertising. To be quite honest, users of the web are now used to advertising in everything they do and see, whether the access to the content they're actually trying to get to is free or, in fact, whether they have to pay for it. So the, the, the um, expectations of the people that are using our information uh, are changing. We can also leverage our expertise and become centers of excellence where we may offer services to others because we have skill sets and expertise that are needed and wanted. Uh, I think one of the key things is for us to look at um, radical partnerships. Radical partnerships within the archives community, radical partnerships with other communities such as the library and museum communities, radical partnerships that involve government, that involve our home institutions, and that involve uh, both not-for-profit and commercial uh, potential partners. And we look at, need to look at those partnerships and how we can leverage providing more access to more content, because your profile will be raised if the content of your collections are accessible to people, and they will begin to value and want to invest more to get access to more of the treasures that, in fact, you are preserving collecting, and making accessible. Thank you very much.